You ever wonder why we call drunk cooks cooks? It's because just like in our cooking at home, there's always a personal flair to the product. Just like how your grandma's apple pie never tastes as good when you try to make it, no drug cooks drugs are exactly the same. Maybe it's your ingredients, say organic apples or homebrewed benzaldehyde. Maybe you add a little extra something just for taste. It's all down to who and how you're making your product. But while baked goods may be addictive and dangerous for your health, these drugs take the cake. Australia is in the grip of a powerful methamphetamine or ice epidemic. Getting this drug off the street will help to save lives. With cooking, somehow you can never put your finger on exactly what makes grandma's pie so special, but with drugs we can do exactly that. Every different ingredient, every different recipe leaves a distinct chemical trace in the finished product that we can observe using highly sensitive instruments. Your average drug cook doesn't make a 100% pure product. There's all of these little byproducts, impurities, like apple pits in your pie. And it's these impurities that forensic organisations use to determine how the drug cooks are making their drugs, and so what they can do with law enforcement to stop the raw ingredients getting into their hands. I'm a drug cook too, but I'm a legal one. My specialty is making pseudoephedrine, a common cold medicine and a common starting material for methamphetamine. I look at one recipe, known as the Arcaboya reaction. Even though it's been around since the 50s, it's only been seen in these drug labs recently. And so it's never been investigated thoroughly. We know it works really well, but we don't know exactly how, and we don't know what traces it's leaving behind in our finished product. Our forensics team needs this information so they know when they're dealing with these kinds of drugs. So they've asked me to investigate. I'm changing the reaction conditions, the temperature, the time, the ingredients, all trying to dredge up these impurities. Armed with this information, our forensics team will know when they're dealing with drugs made this way and they'll be able to link them back to labs they believe are using the recipe. As an organic chemist, I'm also concerned with the how the reaction works as well. Finding out how the pseudoephedrine and any of these impurities are forming is essential for me for trying to make a better product, a greater, more, more of it, and in better, year, um, sorry, better purity. That doesn't sound great for meth, but trust me, this reaction has other potential uses. <laughs> the Arcapori reaction constantly surprises us and throws our best guesses about why it works so well out the window. By experimenting this way, I might be able to find the missing pieces in my reaction puzzle. Making drugs that you need doesn't sound like a good idea, and trust me, don't try it at home. But for me, it's key to improving our understanding of this tried and tested recipe for pseudoephedrine. I guess you could say I'm cooking up the answers. Thank you.